Hot Girls read memoirs and now so do I. For the longest time the only non-fiction I ever read were memoirs, um, my favourite being Mindy Kaling's and as a South Asian woman you can kind of see why, but also her memoirs are actually really good for like a celebrity memoir, kind of sort of like creme de la creme of memoirs really. And I thought I'd branch out and read a few memoirs and cut back on the fiction, but also because the cool girlies love a good memoir. Even when famous people don't really tell us a lot about themselves, they're still quite intriguing to read. And also I've never read a non-famous person's memoir, so I'm kind of excited for that too. Excited to really see what the real difference between kind of like can a normie be as cool and interesting as a famous person? I was ready to find out. I started with The Troubles Between Us and I feel troubled by this book. This is Alex O'Neill's memoir about growing up in Belfast during the Troubles, but it's also kind of not about that. The book wants to be as informative as possible about the Troubles as it can be within the confines of being a memoir. And I guess this is because it wants to be as accessible to those who don't know about the troubles as it can, like as much as it can. And in doing so, it kind of strays from being a memoir to kind of give you like little history lessons in the middle of anecdotes to make sure the reader really understands what's going on. It's commendable to be this accessible, but it feels a little bit like a GCSE history textbook in the middle of the memoir. Like my favourite parts of the memoir are when it covers Alex's own interactions with the troubles. And it like seems obvious, but because that's what the book is like marketed as doing. But I think she wants to give it like a rounder look at the troubles and therefore adds in lots of anecdotes from her family's life too, kind of thereby talking about the troubles from the times it starts to the parts that she actually remembers living through too. However, at least in me, these additions from her parents' life, which obviously cover the like between us part of the troubles referenced in the title, don't really hold any of the same emotional weight as the things that actually happened to her personally. She can only really infer what her parents felt when important things happened to them, during their brushes with the problems of the troubles, the best parts really are the parts during her teenage years because these are the main times she actually remembers living in Belfast. Mainly because like she actually doesn't live in Belfast long after her teen years, like when she moves off to uni. And she can't really use her personal history to tell us more because she's not there. And she also expressed that she doesn't really want to tell us anything about her own life after she left, like leaves Belfast. And in place of this, she, however, tells us a lot about her mother. And her mother, in my opinion, is like the character who clearly has like the more richer and more interesting life. And so this book really covers that in detail. Like Alex is very aware of that. And so Alex mentions throughout the book also that her mother is pretty guarded with her feelings. And so Alex seems to be kind of guessing or like paraphrasing what her mom thinks about the things that she said about her life. So Alex calls the book The Troubles Between Us for a reason. It's not really just a memoir about her, like herself. But in doing so, this book is less gripping than it could have been because she can't give deeper insight into what her mother's life than what she's been told or like been able to gauge herself by living with her mum. The book isn't really structured in a way that is about her relationship with her mum either, it's just about her mum. So she can't really get away from the lack of depth by making it about her bond with her mum. Generally, I think the book could have been like more interesting if she had just focused on herself, like during her time in Belfast, like her teen years, it was just about her teen years. Because you can't really fault those parts of the books, like where she talks about her local pub, her relationship with Protestants, her job, her school, like all of that has way more insight than the other parts. Like the book is marketed actually as like a Derry Girls type of book. And I get why. They're obviously set in the same place during the same sort of time, like Northern Ireland, like during the 90s. But this book is kind of the troubles and then me, rather than like the Derry Girls version of like the comedy and me, and then the troubles, which is like around the characters approach. Which is why I think like the stories that are not centered around Alex herself aren't like really given the justice that they perhaps deserve. I really like Anna Kendrick but there has been this growing idea of her being a bit of a bitch mainly because a lot of like service workers who have been around her have said she's pretty horrible to them and this has made me a little conflicted because anyone who is horrible to service workers in my eyes is a arsehole and I've had Scrappy Little Nobody on my to read for years since it came out so really I decided like seven years after publication to give it a go. I like it, honestly I did and she even says in the book that she's not very nice, but again, this doesn't really let her off the hook for being a bitch to her service workers. And I will say the book did frame some things about her differently to me, however. Like I did not realise she was a child star on Broadway, and even though her biggest roles are like singing roles, I consistently forget that she's really good at singing. Also the child star thing could be why she's horrible. And I also think the child star thing kind of negates the downplaying of this title. You know, you were on Broadway when you were like 11 and you didn't even nepotism your way into the roles. 
like give yourself credit where it's due. She really de-glamorizes Hollywood in a really interesting way. Like she tells us she kind of just lives with some random dudes when she was literally nominated for an Oscar. Another thing I keep forgetting about her because, you know, up in the air which is the movie that she was nominated for an Oscar for, it's incredibly forgettable. Like, she also tells us that her grandma dies in the middle of filming Pitch Perfect, which means a lot of the type of things I thought she might tell us about the filming of that movie are overshadowed by this. Like, she gets taken to the funeral, attends the funeral, and then leaves immediately to come back and shoot the rest of Pitch Perfect. I really thought it was going to be a chapter about how nice the cast are, but no, it was much more harrowing than that. I also feel like Anna Kendrick with this book really rode the memoir wave of like 2016 when she was writing this book. However, as a young actor, she didn't actually have a decent amount to say about her life that was interesting because she has an extensive career even at the point where she wrote this. But it does make me go like, wow, there's a lot that she's done since that would even make like another book. Like she's done more Pitch Perfect. She's done Trolls. Like she hadn't even done that when she'd written this. She has her own HBO show now. Like she might be a bitch. And I kind of do believe that she might be. But at least she's fascinating and a really good narrator. Like I, I listened to this on audiobook, which I actually recommend as the best memoir medium, especially if the writer is narrating themselves. And she's very good at telling us her own life story. Next is Spinning by Tilly Warden. I randomly picked this up because a YouTuber I watched recommended it and she, like the YouTuber, is very obsessed with this author and this is that author's memoir. This author is a graphic novelist, so the memoir is also in this format. I do find it weird that I never read any of her books, but I've read her memoir first, but who, who cares? And I love a good graphic memoir. They're very easy to read, they're incredibly emotive, and I was involved kind of immediately. I read it all in one sitting, like it only took me two hours, so that's a real win for this year's Goodreads goal. And it's about the author's teen years as a competitive figure skater and team skater. I think ice skating is like so beyond cool as I'm really crap at it so I was really wowed by that part of the story but it's also about her tumultuous relationship with the sport which made the whole memoir very like captivating at least to me. I also never realised how mathsy ice skating is. It makes sense when the book explains but this was something I was very surprised by when it comes to ice skating. Another prevalent part of the story is that the author is a lesbian and the book also delves into how this affects life and also her skating as this kind of like takes place during her teen years so it's something that she's kind of like coming to grasps with as the story progresses. Something I've personally never felt as someone who doesn't really have any talents but was really absorbed with is this idea of being really good at something that you don't like doing. I feel like I only really like doing things I'm good at so this was such a bewitching concept to me that's really delved into in this book here and just overall about this book there's no specifics that I want to give on the book but it's one of those books that really like tugs on your heart, it made me so sad but it can also be kind of uplifting at times and I recommend it at the very least for the beautiful artwork and the symbolism the colours like provide throughout the book especially when they are used to express emotion like it's a very beautiful book and I highly recommend it at least for that. So this is Michelle Zorner's memoir and it is centred around her mother dying it's an incredibly poignant and heart-wrenching memoir and it's pretty popular and I don't know what I can say that hasn't kind of already been analysed to death but this kind of really lives up to what is said about it. Her relationship with her mother has like a very deep, has such deep ties, her relationship with her mother has such deep ties to her identity and to lose her in the sort of slow painful way that she does feels really insidious when you're reading it and the way she writes about it makes you feel like your skin is like on fire and like your heart can't stop beating. Zorna is the lead singer of the band Japanese Breakfast which is something I didn't know until I was already reading it and I saw a tweet like midway through reading this at some point say that the book was going to be made into a film and I just thought like you know as a Korean singer Miss lead singer of Japanese Breakfast was just very excited by this new and and was like perhaps you know going to become like a producer of the film. Imagine my surprise when realising Michelle Zorna the author of the memoir was actually Miss lead singer of Japanese Breakfast. I only really got it when Michelle starts talking about her love for music in the memoir at which point I started like probably googling and putting it together and realizing it in this way made it all the more saddening realizing her mother never got to really see her famous and successful in the way that we see her now and I also think it's quite interesting however that Michelle never mentions that she felt this way about her mother never seeing her success like it's interesting to kind of be like maybe maybe at peace with it or at least like not at peace with it so she doesn't tell us about it I don't know and their relationship like any mother-daughter especially like ethnic mother-daughter relationship feels very like personally painful to me that I cried so many times while reading this book especially at the point where she says something like it's really early on she goes 
no when her mum tells her no one will ever love you the way that I do or something like to that effect yeah I don't think anyone will love me like the way that mum does so I was really affected by that and reading this I really do just know that Michelle Zorna cried while watching everything everywhere all at once the last one what I read was Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham she plays Lorelai on Gilmore Girls and that's really what the book is about it's a memoir but it's about Gilmore Girls more than it's about Lauren and it was pretty much written to coincide with the release of the new season of Gilmore Girls released in 2016 on Netflix which makes this another 2016 memoir wave offender. The memoir itself is like good I guess and it comes you know very well liked and recommended but I feel like it's very Gilmore Girls skewed in favour of perhaps like getting sold. Like she writes about the time crunch of writing this book within the book and she has a pretty full life with three big roles I would say and she does favour Lorelai over all of them when writing this. Partly you know it really seems like she likes Lorelai best but also for sales and I love that she's an author aside from this memoir which I don't know and she has a pretty conventional non-nepotism way up the acting ladder. It's good but it's not the most interesting memoir and I think this is because she brushes past her life in parts that aren't about Gilmore Girls. Perhaps thinking you know a reader that's picking this up for Gilmore Girls information wouldn't find it all that interesting but then she also doesn't really divulge much information that's interesting about Gilmore Girls when she's talking about it and like the big section she has when she's talking about that. She's writing before the new show comes out so she can't really talk about the reception of the show, she can only talk about the making of it which is fine but it's kind of boring. Like she can't diss the old writers that kind of take over and like made Gilmore Girls like bad in my opinion, there's no juicy details about the making of, she can't tell us the details of like Alexis and Milo dating, she doesn't really tell us about the meeting of her own like husband and she doesn't really tell us more than what we would already know about the other actors like Melissa McCarthy or anything and the memoir's subheading is Gilmore Girls to Gilmore Girls and maybe the book should have been either more focused on that to give us more interesting information or less to give a wider scope on her life because I think Parenthood is wildly underrepresented for a show that she did for literally years after Gilmore Girls in this memoir. Additionally she's sometimes you know a little unaware of her privilege at times and she definitely tells on her age but that's okay like she's a middle-aged white woman and I knew what I was in for when I started reading this book. The most unique parts in my opinion are the bits where she's talking about writing both when she gives insight on what the Palladinos who are the writers of the show are like but also when she talks about the tips that have worked for her to help her write and also the general discussions she's had on writing throughout her life with other people and since I didn't know writing was like so important to her it felt refreshing to hear something that was actually new and compelling within this book. One thing I've realised over my years as a reader is that sometimes when the right people are hyping something up it means that the hype is well deserved but sometimes the wrong people are allowed internet access so I kind of return to being confused. Crying in H Mart is well deserved of its praise and whilst I don't think I could handle reading it again and why would I, it's a memoir, I already know what I need to know, it's definitely a book that I will carry with me forever because I will always carry my mother with me forever however I will be returning this to the library soon. But I also think that Lauren Graham's memoir is overhyped even when I thought it was like an enjoyable experience to read. Again I audio booked that and she with her like sort of absolute hurtling 100 miles per hour voice does give a good performance. I feel like when a memoir is missing something, especially something that seems vital, in the case of something like uh, Talking As Fast As I Can or The Troubles Between Us, it just feels incomplete or at least like it's selling a different story than what we were expecting because of the marketing being a bit off I guess. Or a memoir can just be something like Scrappy Little Nobody which is a fun read that doesn't really promise to be anything more than it is and it delivers exactly what it should be. But yeah, having read these now, I think that like the next ones I would want to read are more like essay based memoirs or like political memoirs because I think they perhaps maybe you know, have more to say but also because I have a growing interest in political leaders. But yeah, that's it from me. Please tell me if you do have a favourite memoir and if you do what it is, especially if it's a non-celebrity one because I was kind of taken aback by the fact that uh, Craig and HMR was actually a celebrity memoir. I was just expecting it just to be a random woman's sort of like contemplation on her mother's death, but indeed it was not.